guarantees that this world will remember me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated musicals of the 2000s. For this list, we'll be looking at Broadway and off-Broadway musicals that deserve some extra love and attention. Which one of these shows do you think is underrated? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Last Five Years Jason Robert Brown's musical two-hander, The Last Five Years, is a soul-stirring story of a decaying marriage told through opposing timelines. The original off-Broadway cast featured musical theater favorites Norbert Leo Butts and Sherry Renee Scott. Despite there also being a 2013 revival starring Betsy Wolf and Adam Cantor, as well as a West End production with Samantha Barks and Jonathan Bailey, the show has never played Broadway. That being said, in 2014, Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan appeared in a film adaptation. Share your life with me Forever. for the next ten lifetimes. So, at least it got some mainstream love. Some people can't get success with their art. Some people never feel love in their heart. Number 9. Little Women In this room I knew we were alive. Nothing was too painful to survive. We faced the world together, the four of us forever side by side. Louisa May Alcott's Little Women is a beloved American literary classic, but did you know that it's also a musical? The famous March sisters made their big Broadway debut in the year 2005 at the formerly named Virginia Theatre. Two-time Tony-winning actress Sutton Foster took on the role of the lead character Joe March, and Susan H. Shulman directed the production. Sadly, after just short of 140 performances, Little Women met its final chapter. Pass the days doing as we please, that's what living is for. It's a very unfortunate fate considering that the show is nothing short of astonishing. Astonishing. Number 8. Next to Normal Next to Normal arrived on Broadway during a time when the topic of mental health was only just beginning to become a part of a bigger conversation. The musical, which follows a family struggling with bipolar disorder, premiered off-Broadway. A year later, it opened on Broadway with a small cast including Alice Ripley, J. Robert Spencer, Jennifer Damiano, and Aaron Tveit. Nominated for a slew of Tony Awards, it lost the Best Musical category to Billy Elliot, but it did take home a Pulitzer Prize for drama in 2010. Although its subject matter is heavy, Next to Normal is an important work of art worthy of more admiration. Number 7. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels uh, you, got the nerve. you got the guts, you got the nerve, you got the nuts, I guess we're dirty rotten, we're rotten. dirty rotten, no, dirty rotten. 1988's Dirty Rotten Scoundrels paired up Steve Martin and Michael Caine to create one of the decade's funniest films. In 2005, the movie got a Broadway makeover with John Lithgow and Norbert Leo Butts assuming Kane and Martin's on-screen personas Lawrence and Freddie. With music and lyrics by David Yazbek and a book by Jeffrey Lane, Scoundrels was a laugh-out-loud musical comedy that complemented its cinematic origins. I read. 
immediately do deserve it. With servants who will serve it. I don't give a damn what it's for. Every day's my birthday. Every night is my bar mitzvah. Songs like Great Big Stuff and Here I Am were some of the gems that popped off the cast recording, and makes us wonder if. Perhaps it's time for a new revival of this often overlooked show. But everywhere I look, it's like a scene from a book. Open the book and here I am. Number six, Assassins. Free country means you get to connect. That's it. Means the right to expect that you'll have an effect that you're gonna connect. Of course, Stephen Sondheim is one of musical theater's most legendary creators, but even his work can use some extra attention. Originally opening off Broadway in 1990 and later on London's West End in 1992, Assassins was finally scheduled to make its leap to Broadway in 2001. However, due to the September 11th attacks and the show's dark topic, the production was delayed. In 2004, it finally opened but closed after only 101 performances. Let me prove worthy of your love. I'll find a way to earn your love. Wait and see. A show about real-life assassination attempts of American presidents might have been a tough sell, but Sondheim's music paints a provocative and insightful take on history. You can change the world, change the world. simply follow through and look, your little finger can slow them down. Number 5, You're in Town. This is You're in Town, what rest you here in You're in Town? Town may not have the most pleasant title, but proves that you should never judge a book by its cover. The musical is hilarious, thought-provoking, and dark. Centered in a dystopia where civilians have to pay to use toilets, the story is a satirical riot that chews on topics like politics, power, and capitalism. I run the only toilet in this part of town, you see. So if you gotta go, you got to go through me. It's a privilege to be. The show even pokes fun at the musical theater genre, which makes for some great gags and inside jokes for Broadway fans. Oh, everything in its time, little Sally. You're too young to understand it now, but nothing can kill a show like too much exposition. How about bad subject matter? Or a bad title, even. That could kill a show pretty good. Although it was nominated for 10 Tony Awards and won three, the musical never got the praise it truly deserved. What kind of musical is this? The good guys finally take over, and then everything starts falling apart? Like I said, little Sally, this isn't a happy musical. But the music's so happy. Number four, The Drowsy Chaperone. And that's all this show is, fun. Would you... Would you indulge me? Would you let me play the record for you now? Once a fringe festival darling, the drowsy chaperone jumped from the Great White North to the Great White Way in the year 2006. Debuting in Toronto in 1998, the show is a true musical theater fan's dream. Now she really lets go. As we stumble along. The story follows a character, Man in Chair, who is a Broadway superfan and who plays a record of a fictional musical for the audience, which is then acted out. It's one part meta parody, another part theatrical extravaganza. I am a the Drowsy Chaperone is dizzying and uproarious, and we cannot wait to hopefully see Show Off again on Broadway one day. Number three, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. About how to spell these words, words that require thought. People think we're automatons, but that is exactly what we're not. The 
25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee was one of the decade's most unique productions. The show centers around an elementary school spelling bee, where a sextet of quirky students compete to win the top prize. I achieved my goal. So in face in my past, my life on scroll. Amazed in my winning is a job. The show even included aspects of improv and audience participation. The original cast was comprised of Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Celia Keenan Bolger, and Dan Fogler, the latter of whom won a Tony for his role as William Barfay. The magic floor. It's an alphabet away to Although it ran for a few years, Spelling Bee warrants more admiration. In 2021, Disney announced plans for an on-screen adaptation of Spelling Bee, which sounds G-R-E-A-T to us. We like Johnny, he makes us feel normal. We like Spelling Number 2. Caroline or Change Although it's adored by many musical theater fans, Caroline or Change is still wholly underrated. Featuring a book and lyrics by Tony Kushner and music by Janine Tesori, the show opened on Broadway in 2004 and only a few months later closed. Starring Tanya Pinkins and Anika Noni Rose, the story is about an African-American woman who's employed as a housekeeper by a Jewish family in the 60s. If I find money now, I put it in the bleach cup and you people do whatever you want with it. The music blends various genres such as blues, Motown, and folk. Revived in 2021, Caroline or Change yet again suffered the same fate, closing after only a few months. Here's hoping more theatergoers find this musical gem. Singing is high, you ain't never seen the inside of a church. I don't think you got perspective on what the gospel is. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Full Monty. This show was stripped of some much merited praise. Let it go, let it go. Contact. Despite playing over 1,000 times, many forget about this dance play. Bombay Dreams. We're still dreaming of this Bollywood extravaganza. The Pirate Queen. Adventure and fun await all who listen to this musical. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Light in the Piazza I know what the sunlight can be The light, the light in the piazza Once a book and then a film, The Light in the Piazza has gone through many incarnations and mediums. In 2005, the moving story landed on Broadway as a musical and warmed the hearts of theater-loving audiences. This is wanting something, this is reaching for it, this is wishing that a moment would arrive. Situated in the 1950s, it tells the story of a mother, Margaret, and her daughter, Clara, as they vacation in Florence, Italy. During their trip, Clara falls in love with a man while Margaret struggles to let her go. The production, which starred Victoria Clark and Kelly O'Hara, received critical acclaim and won a handful of Tony Awards. After running for over a year, Piazza dimmed its lights, but never faded from the hearts of its fans. Oh, 
little meaning solum. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.